we may not be able to go out, but you know what we can do? Can stay. We in. can stay. Stay in, in the place that we've paid rent there for. There we already. go. <laughs> and I do think that we've lost that sense of just wanting to commune. Yeah, yeah. And we've made it to be honest about image we need sugar sisters <laughs> as well as we need sugar daddies not everything has to be let's do brunch let's do dinner let's do lunch you let's go for cocktail brunches On she said you scrooges do not be stingy hello and welcome to the two my sisters podcast i'm courtney and i'm renee and we are your online sisters and hosts of the two my sisters podcast we are all about promoting the wellness growth and development of a community of sisters around the world and in today's episode we're going to be talking about whether friendships are getting too expensive big bucks yo are being from spent. bed day dinners ah. to girls trips ah. away to the very reality that bills are increasing and the cost of living <laughs> is rising cost of however the importance of investing in friendship and mm. the pressure mm. to shell out the peace mm. mm. we're gonna get into it and more. let's talk about it oh i can't wait for this topic because <laughs> we've been having conversations in and amidst our own yeah, friendships yeah. we've been seeing a lot of things flying around on the tl and we are gonna address them <laughs> and more <laughs> but before we do that we definitely have some housekeeping announcements we do, we do the first one being the tms live show come on guys it's almost sold out almost actually sold out. it's almost sold out one of the biggest well most iconic <laughs> venues in london um over a thousand women have already bought a ticket have so you? what are you doing <laughs> Have you? See your base. <laughs> See your base. This is big FOMO energy. If you miss out on this, I don't actually know what to tell you because we listened. You guys complained. You said, oh, we want more capacity. We want more shows. We want more this. We went to Hackney Empire, Empire. invested yeah. 1,000, over 1,000 tickets and over 1,000 tickets have long <laughs> left. Okay. There's only a few left. Yeah. So please be wise. But even on that, thank you. Like, it, that's actually crazy that with, like, no big marketing Yo. campaign, with, like, no ad spend, no big shout outs, like, just the power of this community, we're literally about to sell out by God's grace alone. Hackney, Hackney Empire. Empire. That's crazy. Like, top name comedians, celebrities and Bruh. stuff. That's what they do. Look. And we did that. And this isn't like, a, oh, we had a whole super team that's just been doing this event. It has been me. It has been Courtney and it's been a wonderful event coordinator, Raquel. Raquel. She'll even be listening to this. Oh my gosh, guys, not the show. Raquel. But absolutely amazing. Has been holding it down for the past three years, yeah. actually. So to see TMS live events go from a capacity of 100 to mm. a capacity of the 1,000 mm. is insane. So genuinely, guys, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so yeah. much for investing in us. Thank you for investing in this community. Um, and we would really, really appreciate it if you continue to support us to our goal of selling oh, out Hackney yeah. Empire. And just to reiterate, as Courtney said, look, this is coming from our pockets <laughs> and we ain't doing this just to make money or whatever like yeah. that. A lot of the money, if not literally all of it is being reinvested into TMS. Yeah, Me and Courtney, making, hello. Making hey. this next year bigger and better than ever. We're Talking trying. about next year, though, there are a lot of interesting changes and innovations yeah. let's say yeah, yeah, yeah. that are going to come into the tms world and we actually cannot wait to share that with you but with that being said we actually want to know what you would want to see from tms we are about to turn three years old Literally. and so we feel like okay we're a toddler we've got our food here <laughs> let's actually figure out what we want to be you know and so we've been doing our planning and plotting but this is a community effort so we want to know how can we bring value to your glowing and growing journey we've created hundreds of episodes so far detailing thoughts feelings and like approaches to life personal mm -hmm. development relationships healing growth but we want to know how we can actually give you value Absolutely. and some of the things we have in mind are like workshops bring on guests and stuff like that not gonna let you know too much but what could we do for you is it an episode we could Period. produce a person we could bring on a workshop we could hold resources we could create for you what do you need all right sisters tell us and this is not just in the uk 
globally what do you need how can we mm-hmm. leverage the internet to help you um are there any like charitable efforts you would like to see us involved in obviously we've worked around like period poverty and menstruation we've worked in the education space digital education entrepreneurship yep. but what would you like to see us do to help you advance yep. and feel free to be as specific or as broad as possible but we really do want to hear your feedback so if you are listening on youtube or watching on youtube leave a comment down below if you're listening on spotify leave a comment on spotify if you um have us on instagram we'll probably put up a post saying like what would you like to see from tms um in our next year and leave a comment under that but your feedback is going to be a huge part of shaping what tms looks like in the future we really do want this to be a collaborative effort so yeah thank you Please and thank you, sisters. Remember that this whole community is nothing without our actual Facts. community. As much as you see our lovely faces week in and week out and in various capacities, we want to make sure that you have ownership over this community. Yeah. And we are so interested to hear what it is that you want and need from the TMS community. Mm-hmm. And on that note, in terms of what we need from you, we need you to rate this podcast five stars. Yes. We need you to share it as well. Sisters. You've been coming in clutch, oh, sharing with your friends. so well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Celebration, so celebration. Well. Five gold stars for you, <laughs> but five gold stars for, for us. us too, please. <laughs> Can you be sharing, continue yeah, to share? If there's a real. sister that could really benefit from listening to our podcast, we would love it if you would share it with them. Even if it's a, a brother, you know, if there's something that you wanted to say to this brother that you didn't feel you could articulate, please share with him the podcast. We're trying to reach the brothers as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but we really want to see this sisterhood grow not just in terms of depth but also breadth we want to have a truly global community of sisters glowing and growing and we can only do that if the sisters share with their sisters so please support it well now that the house is swept yeah somebody else needs support with their Mm, housekeeping they do they do on that note we shall go into a ding 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 dilemma Okay, bear with me because this one is a little bit oh, uh, lengthy. Yes, a bit lengthy. Yeah. Hey, sisters. Hello, sweetie. Firstly, thank you so much for helping me navigate my first season of my self-awareness and oh. personal growth journey from way back in 2020 when I was 19 wow. years old and going through a lot. It's our pleasure. Words cannot express how grateful I am for being the role models I needed at that time in my life when I was lost and naive. Mm. So recently, I made friends with a girl through my current partner who at the time was going through a rough time in her marriage. She's 26 and has been married for almost four years. Despite the This being a difficult time in her life, she was open to being friends with me as she expressed that she has never felt more alone, given the fact that her husband lives abroad and she had never had friends outside of her relationship. For some context of the gravity of the situation, her husband had been her closest friend, confidant, business partner, provider to some degree and much more. However, he decided that he started dating someone else he met where he's currently living and wanted to pursue an open relationship so he could be with this girl. According to him, he couldn't relate and be open in conversation with his wife like he could with her. And this girl had the potential to help him achieve some of his ambitious pursuits. Eventually, he got her pregnant but unfortunately she had a miscarriage. Mm. My friend doesn't update me anymore on the matter, which Mm. I have come to accept, Mm -hmm. but is visibly an absolute wreck. Mm. It's been some months and some days she is feeling optimistic and other days suicidal. I don't know how to navigate this relationship with her by giving her more support than random acts of kindness, prayer and encouragement, as it doesn't seem to be helping much. Mm. I haven't known her for long and it's difficult considering that she doesn't open up easily, Mm. doesn't like asking for help, nor communicates her feelings well, which is understandable. Please, sisters, I need some guidance. She is a thoughtful, beautiful girl who doesn't deserve all this trauma. And I feel like I've exhausted my options here. Mm. Please, I don't know what I'd do if she harmed herself beyond repair. Mm. I'd have to fight the spirit of vengeance that would be directed towards that Mm -hmm. husband of hers. Awaiting some guidance. Thanks, girls. That is heavy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, that's tough. It's tough. Um, firstly, her husband is trifling. Absolutely trifling. Um, that is, yeah. Outrageous. Whoa. Outra- absolutely outrageous. Whoa. And this is why, sorry to even interject. No, it's this fine. is why, no, no, no. <laughs> this is why we need the from the brothers to the brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. as much as us women can talk about, oh, he's a cheater, he's trifling, ETC, and some of your boys, you need to check some of your boys, your boys ASAP. Yeah. Because what the hell? That is serious. What? To be 
dating someone else and then impregnate them. What? And then just feel like, yeah, that's just okay. I want to pursue an open relationship after you got married. After. Interesting. Uh, So for me, I'd say like, just from a friendship perspective, um, because you're not like the perpetrator of this situation and also getting involved or, you know, too involved in someone's marriage matters can become messy very Mm. quickly. And I would say as much as you can give advice, don't give advice that has not been asked for or when there hasn't been a space created for your advice to be given per se. Um, I do think you're doing well though in showing up for her genuinely just as a friend. Mm. So as much as her marriage can be marriage is tough can can be tough right and it can have the biggest toll on you because it's one of the closest or it is the closest relationship to you and so I can imagine how this is probably tainted and affected everything like you said you know she's battling a lot of stuff now mental health wise but for you as her friend you had to understand that you can still create an environment for her to feel comfortable Mm -hmm. an environment for her to feel loved and it doesn't necessarily be need to be um focused on oh let's sit down and talk about your marriage or let's sit down and talk about how you're feeling Mm. even it can just be do you want to come over and watch a film yeah. like or do you want to come over just to chill and I, I understand that you might not be in the mood don't worry we don't need to talk but I would just love to keep you company mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or if you know that there are certain things she will need throughout the week groceries just a listening ear a coffee whatever it is just show up show up in those capacities just to be near just to be close and to show her that somebody does care mm-hmm. and that may create the environment not it may not but it may create the environment for her to start opening up and also giving you the floor and the opening to advise her to potentially in my opinion leave um her husband sounds like she's he's already left her Mm. so it's just now what does she want to do um and i know the husband hasn't left exactly but he's may have violated their trust in some way or at least he's abusing her love for him because she's not happy with this situation and so I don't I can't advise on what she should do in her marriage and I don't think you can necessarily either unless she opens up the floor for you there but what I can advise is for you to be a sister Mm. and for you to be present and to create a space where she can feel safe loved cared for nurtured in whatever way she may need and she may not have the strength or the the words to express it right now or even feel like she can because you are such new friends but the fact that you are burdened with this in your own heart means that you now need to be proactive in showing her the love she may not be strong enough to ask for right now and so show up be present um, and I would also say, ask your partner. Hmm. She's still, is she still? Well, I don't well, know if you yeah, are still with yeah, your partner. Yeah. I guess you are. But ask your partner to talk to him. Oh. Because obviously you met him through, you met her through him. And so I feel like an auntie yeah, getting yeah. all my him and hers confused. Um, yeah, you, <laughs> you met your friend through your boyfriend. Right. And so ask your boyfriend to chat to his boy or chat, ask him to chat to her partner um because i do agree exactly with what you opened with which is we actually there are some conversations that need to happen from brother to brother because unfortunately some men don't really want to listen to a woman's opinion about how they should steward their relationship especially if they don't have proximity to her Mm. and so i will definitely say if you can get your boyfriend to have that man-to-man conversation with him then you definitely should because what he's doing is clearly out of order because it's affecting her so negatively or affecting his wife so negatively negatively um and you can just stick to when your friend gives you the opening to and I think you can generally tell when someone's like oh I think I'm ready to talk about this now Mm -hmm. or like what do you think Mm -hmm. um and giving you the room to share your thoughts then really empower her I wouldn't even say to go in and be like he's the ass or you could you definitely can I would (laughs) um but (laughs) I would definitely take this as an opportunity to empower her and Mm -hmm. to remind her that you know as much as maybe he has been her whole world, he is not her whole world. Mm. She can go and build a new one outside of him, after him, or she can take that, you know, very directive authority, authority position in her marriage that she has a right to as a wife to be like, I don't like this. Either this changes Mm -hmm. or we break up. Right. And I know that that's like big talk, but she's a big woman. Right. right? Right. And she's grown and she's, been in this relationship from a very young age 22 or 23 to 26 is 
a long time um, but also a lot has changed about you as a person in that mm. kind of time and it will continue to change as you mature so a lot of her adult world has been shaped by her being with this man and if she doesn't want to lock herself into something that she doesn't agree to she should feel empowered enough to put her foot down and be like this isn't actually what I want for my life and maybe that empowerment will come from a very supporting sister who mm. reminds her of who she is and what power lies within her to Di start directing her life and making the life that she wants and mm -hmm. right now she may not see it because she may feel like you said she's going through a lot mentally but I think with your encouragement and your continual love being poured into her I don't see how she couldn't find that empowerment um and that sudden not sudden but that um gradual even that gradual empowerment mm -hmm. and boldness and freedom to say you know what something has to change and whatever that change looks like hopefully you can provide her with the wisdom um that you have to be able to know what her options are and hopefully discern what the best one is for her and her husband at the time mm. um but i will say continue to pray continue to be selfless as well mm. continue to give her the space she needs um not not necessarily distance but as in create the space for her in your life that she would need right now mm. um to occupy so whether that is you know looking at your schedule and seeing where you can fit her in or where you can go and you know maybe just spend some time with her pray for her pray for her eyes to be open so she can make these decisions independently um i think when you are a friend who's trying to counsel somebody yeah. another friend about their relationship it gets a bit techy because it can go one or two ways right. which is they can now begin to see you as an em enemy of progress and so one mm -hmm. thing i will say is if you do believe in the power of prayer is pray that her heart becomes receptive mm -hmm. to the good thing that god wants for her and so she doesn't see that or think that you are pushing something onto her which she doesn't want mm -hmm. and so this is genuinely a process for her to go down and a, a whole journey journey a glowing and growing journey and like a grief journey a heartbreak journey whatever it is a healing journey for her to go down and I really think you should pray that God guides her on that journey because there's only so much that you can actually do um, as someone who hasn't even known her for a very very long time either so continue to pray for her continue to pray for her sanity but very last 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 if anything does happen to her it's not your fault right. and I know that there can be that kind of worry there which is oh my gosh I'm aware that somebody is suffering and I need to do something to stop that but you weren't the cause of the suffering nor are you the antidote to the suffering either mm. the suffering is being caused by the perpetrator who doesn't want to change and so the only way that the victim can become free of the suffering is either to remove themselves from the situation or for the perpetrator to change or for God to cause a flipping miracle and so I think you need to remember that this isn't all on you mm. but you can take up responsibility as a sister but your role is just a sister and your capacity is limited to just being a sister you're not her so you can't make decisions for her mm -hmm. and you're not her husband so you can't even control what happens in their marriage and so pray for your friend and be the best sister that you can be but remember that this is her journey to go on and you can only be a part of that mm -hmm. yeah Whew. jeez is there anything to add to that? Not even a little bit. Just what she said, <laughs> underline it, and highlight it. You know when you're making notes and something, highlight, mm. exclamation mark, circle everything. <laughs> um, completely agree. That was super, super thorough and incredibly empathetic because mm. I think sometimes when you are a sister in a situation that is outside of your control, it can feel like you're caught between a rock and yeah, a hard I place. Think. And I think um, it's something that we write about in our book, mm. this whole idea of I can support you and like what the role of a supporting sister is, but I cannot be your son. Mm. And the frustration that comes with seeing your friend or seeing a loved one go through a very, very you know toxic or painful situation and wanting to directly intervene but understanding that actually those levers of change are not attributed to you. You can only actually support or create safe spaces for them to exist. Or um, in some cases you may have to, you know, directly inter intervene and heaven forbid that we get to that situation or that place, but it's mostly a role of empowerment and supporting the sister that is in your midst to yeah. make the right decisions or, you know, giving advice when called upon, um, resisting the temptation to give unsolicited mm. advice as well. That's can the be word quite I was difficult. looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be really difficult because, again, you have a very different perspective in this situation, right? You're not in the midst of it. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes 
both the privilege and curse of being a quote unquote outsider is that you have a quote unquote objective mm. lens and you can clearly see what is right and wrong. But equally, emotions are often as valid as objectivity. Um, and having built a life with somebody, as you mentioned um, in the dilemma, this person is married to someone who is ostensibly their entire support mm. system, business partner, um, somebody that is also a provider. And to go through that level of betrayal, it will take time mm. to, you know, if she does decide to untangle herself or decide to separate, it will take time to get to that place yeah. or equally she might not want to. And it's being able to show up as a sister, even when your sister may be making decisions that you may not agree with. Mm. Um, so it's really standing in agreement with her as a sister and not necessarily just partnering with her decisions. And I think sometimes that can be so hard and frustrating and difficult when you think you know what's right for your sister. Um, I love what you were saying about, you don't necessarily have to be the problem solver, but you can just create space for her to exist. I think that's super important, especially as women, having a place where you can, take your hair down mm. and just chill and actually exist and cry or, you know, um, enjoy a movie with a bestie yeah. or like, you know, have food, have jokes. It's very important that we create these spaces in people's lives because when our lives are purely punctuated by pain, then it becomes very, very difficult to continue. Yeah. So understanding that showing up as a sister isn't just about, you know, supporting her in the decision-making element, but actually just creating space for her to exist as herself outside of this marriage, outside of this painful um, mm. moment or this painful part of her life. And definitely agree if you can push your boyfriend to go and do a little something, something if you can from the back try and, you know, hey, yeah. I think you should have a conversation if you can. Um, again, not your responsibility yeah. and not something that you can force. But if you do have the capacity to do that, then that would be good. Because like you were saying, some folks are not receptive to, you know, that direct engagement. And sometimes it will take a different vessel for the message to hit hard. That's good. So if you can facilitate that vessel, getting to that person and being like, bro, <laughs> mano y mano. Yeah. We got some things to say. <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, and truly, really, we got some things to say. And I think it's important that it comes from a bad slip because mm. for some reason, mm. you hear it from a woman and all that of a sudden it's forming. She's dagging. He's killing you. <laughs> Gingering you. Hey, what is it? Why is it that when women talk, you're upset? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, and continue to pray, you know, for your sister. Also just pray for all the folks involved in the situation. You know, mm. you can, as hard as it may be, you know, you might need to pray for that husband and for the girl because, you know, we need some heart posture changes in, in that situation. Ones. Very, very big ones, um, which is super, super important. So yes, yeah, it's, it's one of these situations where it's actually very difficult and mm. there's no clear resolution or clear happy ending. Mm. All endings will be painful because this is actually a painful thing that your sister is going through and all folks involved. The only thing that you can do is mitigate and support as best as you can um, and show up for your sister now more than ever before. And you were saying that, oh, I'm not too close to her. This is your opportunity yeah. to get close to her. Not necessarily just to reveal her relationship, but what, what are the things that she likes to do? You know, yeah. do that with her. Um, where are the places that she would like to go? Maybe go there with yeah. her, you know. Um, think about if you're comfortable integrating her into, you know, other things that you like to do with your yeah. other friends and whatnot. Just so that you can build some kind of community around her. I think that's super, super important. Um, I don't know what her relationship is like with the rest of her family. But, you know, if it is a positive one, then, you know, figuring out how you can also get the family together maybe not under the premise of your daughter's going through yeah, something but you know you know what i mean it could be a nice hey let's go hang out with your family a bit more or just finding ways to remind her that there is a community around her mm. is super super important in that time mm. but sis not only are we praying for you but we're also praying for your sister we really really pray that god actually does a miracle in your situation and we really just encourage you to keep on we really encourage you to you know take the time that you need to make the right decisions for you um and we're also praying for everybody in this situation Literally. and sisters if you are listening in I don't know if you've had experience with, you know, when a spouse, you know, steps out on you or even experience just engaging with a sister that's going through a tough time. Mm. We need your advice. Mm. We need your support, especially the older sisters. If you have something to share, please, please, please come over to YouTube. We may actually even post it on our social media, mm. um, but we'd love to crowdfund and get sisters involved. How can we support? How can we help this sister to support her sister? We would love to know. Yeah. But sis, we are sending you so much love. Keep us posted. Keep us updated. 
Um, and hopefully you'll get to a place in the situation where things are starting to get resolved. We get to get a little bit more progress, um, but we love you and we love her and we're sending you all our best. All, all our best. Man, that was a heavy one. Jeez. That was a heavy one. Jeez, jeez, the jeez, dilemmas jeez. be dilemmering. For real. For real. And yet onto yet another dilemma. Ah, the expenses the, of friendship. Ah, the expenses, expenses. Mm. So I really wanted to touch on this particular topic because, mm. you know, we love to talk about friendship on yeah. this podcast. We are friends. We, we are. have spoken a lot about friendship <laughs> stuff. A whole book on a it. A whole book on it. <laughs> and one thing that I think a lot of people don't actually have candid frank mm. conversations around is obviously money yeah but very rarely do we talk about money within platonic relationships yeah. it's often romantic relationships yeah. that we hear the man should be paying yeah, x y z yeah, speaking yeah. of speaking of this is such a tangent speaking of romantic relationships mm -hmm. and you know the man should be paid etc did you see that tiktok of oh. the babe that ate 48 oysters on the first date <laughs> firstly is that even healthy Stop. Ciao. Yeah, girl. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. They just got a big up that. She hungry, yeah. But that man <laughs> left. Yeah, he didn't pay the bill. He left because he invited her out for drinks. And then, <gasps> yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. In this economy, did she like him a lot? I don't know. In this economy, yeah. Know. And this is not me even policing like how much you eat when you're out. Cause like get a full meal, girl, get a star cut yeah, meal. Do 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 but if someone thing. explicitly says, I'm inviting you out for drinks, I think it's actually quite unfair, especially when like because of traditional dating dynamics, yeah. you know the guy is most likely gonna pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you set that expectation and then you go and take the piss like that, like completely out of their budget. I can't lie, I have to sympathize because mm. it's not even a cheap food. Mm. That's oysters expensive. Yeah, but that also oysters. 48 oysters. Sis like, was hungry. <laughs> get <laughs> chips. <laughs> something on the hungry. side no but then she proceeded to get okay some more food. okay 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 got you got you got she you she proceeded to get more food after the oysters as in a like i'm gonna you to take, yeah i'm gonna yeah. you to, take to watch it was her like you know expressing i'm just enjoying my oysters you know slurp slurp and i was like yeah, girl why are you hungry um, but no i'm actually really trying to understand this so did she know that she was spending a lot of money but she just didn't she was like it doesn't really matter yeah it doesn't matter she covered the bill at the end of the yeah yeah fair but i would but, have yeah but she better have yeah i don't know date it look anyway, dating is complex man it's complex when we will bring on a brother we will revisit yeah this. my so. thing is not that before someone gets me misconstrued yeah my thing is not that she ate 48 oysters mm. well also I mean, that's quite is, is it mercury poisoning <laughs> <laughs> so you get it's from eating too much seafood. That, no. that hot sauce, you know Dang. what I'm saying? Anyway, um, it's a lot of raw fish. Yeah. But yeah, it's not that she ate that much. It's that someone said, "I'm inviting you out for drinks," yeah. and then you did that. That's quick. That you did say dinner, baby. I mean, I hear it. I, you know what? It's I ain't gonna lie. It's tough, and this is it is. But it's like me inviting you out, being like, "Oh, Renee, do you want to go and get drinks?" Mm. And I know what my budget is. Yeah. Do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like dating's already not cheap. And then you come in and being like, I'm going to get everything else. Mm. And then you go on overboard it was like that. It was and it's like, so now I've got to pay. I'll pay for your what I initially yeah. intended to. The rest, I'm I ain't got it. I think what was bad about that though was that guy left. Yeah. To, did he not say anything? No. He yeah, just that's up and left. That's not courteous. Just left. That's not, not gems nice at all. At all. Come on, that's guys. That's not gentlemanly. Stop it. That's do bad. That. Don't do that. Dating politics, Sha. Anyway. Anyway. So, so God be the glory. But mm -hmm. I say that to say we often have conversations around those kind of topics. But then platonic relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, yeah. girl, but friends is getting a little uh, pricey, pricey in the most recent, pricey. you know. Life is getting pricey. Talk to me about it. Socializing is getting Talk pricey. Talk to me about Going it. Going outside is expensive it's nowadays. Like expensive. big biggest talk we're not one of them people that sit on the internet in front like we are rich to the even if i had money up to here yeah let me tell you something i will still talk about how expensive life has become 110 percent. um and i think it's important to you because it then normalizes the fact that like to feel broke and we did an episode um mm. a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's actually quite normal especially when you're in your 20s yep. or you're kind of young you're getting on your feet with your career you're 
trying to get on your feet financially in general you're also trying to save towards certain stuff you're mm-hmm, trying to mm-hmm. explore and adventure trying to have a good time but also trying to live like balancing all of these different acts in a cost of living crisis or in a hard economic time or environment where things are genuinely inflation is at sky high levels things are becoming so expensive food is literally like doubling in price in some cases it's actually very normal to be like i have not got the money yeah. do you get what yeah, i mean yeah, like yeah. i actually do not have the money and i think why i love that this is the topic for this week is a lot of people because money Mm -hmm. is so linked to experiences and socializing and the capacity to be in community in communion with people it can then affect things like the community we have around us like our friends Mm -hmm. our Mm -hmm. family when we do we are going through broke seasons do you know i mean or times where we have to rejig our budgets a little bit and our finances so now you know that dinner you used to go out for I can't afford it anymore mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. that that birthday dinner or that birthday gift I can't afford that and you're now thinking will this now affect my relationship or my closeness yeah. with that person yeah. and I do think it's one thing for someone's love language to be gifts or um, something that you know requires money mm-hmm. and quality time that may surround money but I do think it's important for us to have empathetic um, conversations with our friends that say the environment that we're living in is not the same anymore, yeah, right? The yeah. financial environment is not the same anymore. And so if that affects our friendship dynamic, let's try and think of contingent contingencies where our friendship is not so di- dependent on money. Mm-hmm, Do you get mm-hmm. what I mean? I think that's a freedom people should be able to have. Mm-hmm. But like you so highlighted, especially in a country like the UK, oh. we rarely talk about money, first of all. But also secondly, sometimes there can be a lot of smokes and mirrors mm-hmm about finances with your friends and you mm-hmm. don't know who's making what and we've sort of discussed this kind of thing about friendship in your 20s before where it's like there's this period in your 20s i would say between like 24 to 26 27 where everyone's life suddenly diverts like it's we were all on the same page we were all at the similar stage right. in life we were at school then we were at uni then we were fresh graduates and then suddenly you get to that point of your mid-20s where it's like suddenly some people are single some people are married some people are have are starting to have kids someone's even bought a house someone's yeah. driving a really nice car others are still getting public transport somebody has 12 p someone has 12 grand yeah. it's like a lot of <laughs> it's a lot. Yes, no, <laughs> no someone's unemployed <laughs> someone's making six figures it's like okay what's normal Mm -hmm, and so i think mm -hmm, when you mm -hmm. are then navigating friendship it's also like you don't want to be the one to admit you don't have it yep because you assume someone else has it do you know what i mean um and so i just think that's when it all becomes awkward and complicated and Mm. it's hard to then it takes your friend i would even reframe it in a positive way i think it actually gives you a new opportunity to experience a new level of transparency yes with your friends that creates a new level of intimacy like i know with us um in various points of our relationship and our friendship we've had to tell each other i don't have money like plain (laughs) and simple i think i even said it to you recently i don't have the cash (laughs) i've got nothing for you i've got nothing do you get what i mean i don't have nothing nothing but for that i have have nothing i have zero and i think that then breaks the ice a bit because it's like oh you know what me too you know Ah, or ha 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 or you know i'll cover that or whatever i think Mm. um it breeds a new level of intimacy because you're being honest and i think you can't have intimacy without a level of honesty and transparency um and unfortunately especially as women where there is so much of a capitalistic pressure to keep up with the Joneses, to look like, you know, a particular way, even if that's not your present reality, it can be very hard to be honest and transparent about finances because it's so linked to our Mm self-esteem. And I'm sure the same is very true, or maybe even more amplified for men and masculinity. But within friendship, it's even harder because there is sometimes an element of, I wouldn't even say competition, but trying to keep up. And so if somebody is like, oh, let's go to Tulum or let's do it. And it's like, I want to do that and i also don't want you guys to all go without me and bond mm-hmm. i don't want to be mm-hmm. left out and mm-hmm. fomo is so real um but then we have to look at our accounts and think maybe i should miss out on this because yeah. i ain't got it yeah i ain't got it i ain't and that's you know what it makes me think of ages ago when i went to um what was it confirmation classes mm. back in the day and my confirmation future was like 
instead of lying, like we're just talking about like morality <laughs> and stuff like that. She's like, instead of lying, you can be very, very truthful, but it's all about the way that you phrase yeah. things. And she was like, it's not about saying that you don't have the pen. It's about saying, I don't have the pen for you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't have the allocated funds for this oh, particular yeah, thing. And that's what that, um, what you were just saying made me think of the fact that there's quite a lot of things that we want to do with people that we often don't have the capacity yeah. to allocate for because yeah. we now have new responsibilities we now have um, other things to take care of and because there is often that divergence that you were speaking of right where some of us actually have more responsibilities and more things that we need to allocate funds to. Mm. It means that our friendship fund or our the place where we you know love to have yeah. fun and do all those kind of things is slightly depleted because we have a kid, or slightly depleted because now you know we have bills to yeah. pay. Bills are quite a serious thing, I yeah. must say, folks. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I think what I have always felt quite blessed about is the fact that quite a lot of my close friends mm. are very honest as you were Same, saying yeah. very transparent and saying babe i would love to do this but i mean i have that mm, 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 not today mm, mm, not mm, this month mm, maybe mm, next mm. month we can talk about yeah, it or maybe never um, or maybe <laughs> or maybe never <laughs> like, because the answer is just i there. just don't but also i think what it. our friends are really good at is saying i can't do this but i can do this yeah they do you have, get what they I have mean? alternatives yeah I think that's actually important right yeah. because i think sometimes we can almost mark ourselves out of the race mm. or mark ourselves out of actually engaging with people because we don't have money mm -hmm. but it's understanding that there's other ways that you can have fun this is we it. were literally talking this about this it. we were like look we may not be able to go out but you know what we can do can stay we in. can stay, stay in, in the place that we've paid rent there for we go <laughs> there we go but also like i was saying that example of like you know when our when our parents used to commune with right. community everyone was at everyone's house or i remember one of my friends was saying this ironically right. we were at her birthday dinner my friend mandy if you've watched my new york hey, vlog mandy. you've seen mandy um she's been a supporting sister at Literally. many many tms lives but um she was saying how like the reason why we don't even have hall parties anymore like big big functions within yeah, the community yeah. is because people don't have that community mindset of saying i'll bring a little bit of mm -hmm, this i'll bring a little mm -hmm. bit of that but like there was that es essence of collaborative effort and right. pooling resources together and stuff like that and i do think that we've lost that sense of just wanting to commune yeah, yeah. and we've made it to be honest about image oh, like you man. know it's like nah we'll do the girl trip when we can afford to go to Bora Bora yeah. and it's like we can do a girl's night at home we, could do do you I mean? we, we don't even need to go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> We could go to, we could get the train to another we place. To, we can go to Brighton. We can yeah. go to uh, Copenhagen. You know, places that are close by. Nearby, nearby. Nearby. And I do think there's something to be said about like only communing with your friends when it is something big and yeah. glamorous yeah, yeah, and yeah. elaborate or something that requires monetary investment. And I'm not saying these things are wrong. We love a good girls trip. We, do. we love a good flight somewhere, a birthday dinner, something exuberant. Mm -hmm. But I do think there's something to be said about investing when the, the stakes are a bit lower or maybe the investment like you said is just time or sacrificing your house for a little bit or cooking that dinner and inviting someone over like mm. i remember when you had just come back from the states and i was building my company i was like none of us have money Not even a little let's bit. be frank Not an ounce. so like you came over to my mom's house and we just kicked it we ate food she chilled in my room and that That's was it times. like that good was times. good times and not everything has to be let's do brunch let's do dinner let's do lunch you let's go for cocktails them brunches ah those brunches are expensive and what you get for those brunches is outrageous yeah i'll never forget <clears throat> the place that we went to i don't think it was brunch that's near our apartment oh yeah 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 god <laughs> no 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 guys guys and this is why i actually don't believe in tapas sometimes i don't believe in them or them small plates that cost like 20 pounds yeah no because it's actually a bowl of nonsense yeah. there was one place we were like oh let's go out you know do some nice girly stuff together yeah. come Dinner. and see come and see small plates for like 20 25 Tiny. pounds and i think the thing that angered me the most was that brownie that yeah it was really bad that was outrageous i believe brownies should be fudgy and not cakey yeah same that was basically chocolate cake, cake. but it was also dry yeah it was and it bad didn't even it come so with expensive. ice cream it was raspberry coolie yeah. and i was like absolutely not yeah i digress <laughs> but i say all of this to say sometimes the things that we often put value on as exhibiting or demonstrating that oh we've done a thing as you know yeah. friends is not all that it's cut out to be no, and it's not all that matters it's not all that matters right it's very much about okay how can i actually create environments or spaces for me to spend time with my friends yeah. in a meaningful way having said that though on the other side of the equation mm -hmm. 
I know that I love a good party. I love a good brunch and I love a good, for example, I want to go to maybe not Mexico. Let's say uh, I want to go to Italy for my birthday and stuff like that. How do you deal with, if you are, for example, a high earning friend Mm. or you're in a season of your life where actually, you know, you can afford to do a couple of things, ETC, but you're finding you're in a space where quite a few of your friends are not capable of doing that. How do you deal with navigating money conversations, mm. especially when it feels like you might have the upper hand in right. conversations? Right. So even if you have the best of intentions and you're like, look, I'll pay or look, I'll we can find something alternative to do. Sometimes folks that are in that position of having a little bit less or not comfortable with like sharing their current financial issues yeah. may feel a bit uncomfortable or yeah. feel a bit, mm, it feels a little shady. Well, not shady, but it is, something that causes quite a lot of discomfort how does a high earning friend navigate the very real possibility that they may be quote unquote limited in doing certain things that they want to do because of money i think it rests on what we were just saying about the fact that like friendship isn't just experienced through the shelling out of loads of cash do you get what i mean um the worst thing you can do is just label your friends according to their paycheck and be like, oh my God, my friends are broke. I don't even, I need to level up and find mm. a new group of friends, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 who can oh, do what I want to do. The, you know people love yeah, do you know what I mean? And it's like, well, actually, there's so much more to a person more generally than where it is they can attend, where they can afford to eat. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like character, their capacity to show up for you, their desire to actually love you and their commitment to loving you. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. You know, mm. they'll go with, the people who can give them a good time but who aren't necessarily good people and they leave good people behind because they're pursuing a good time and so honestly I think you should pay attention to who are the good people Mm. and then on a practical level realize that like if you give your friends enough notice for certain things, they could possibly make it happen. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? And so for you, if somebody says, you know, pack your bag, we're going to Italy tomorrow, that might be light work. But for some people, and not even just limited to money, but life circumstances, mm. they can't just be like, yeah, sure, I'm going to get up and leave the country. They need maybe five, six, t- 12 months notice. Yep. Let me know what you're trying to do and I can budget for it. And I think because of the economics like situation we're in right now yep. people need to budget for things you can't just spring something on someone and i've learned this as well Unless like you pay him. and that was my third thing <laughs> which was if you got it like that get it for everybody do you know what i mean and and i know a lot of people will be like i'm against that blah 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 but i also think yeah Come on, we're in them. a time mm-hmm. where like i think our parents had it right in the sense of if someone's invited you somewhere why are they not paying for you to go and to be very honest i hear it because what it makes us all do is live within our means <laughs> do you get what I mean? <laughs> it makes us live within our means we need sugar sisters <laughs> as well as we need sugar daddies sugar daddies we I need sugar, sugar sisters. sisters but also like because you've got to deep the scale of what you're asking people to yeah, do yeah. right and when you start to really think about it it's a big investment. So Mm. certain things that friends, you know, want us to do, it's not that they're not good and they're not grand, but like, it's actually a really big investment. And for you, it may be like, oh, that's disposable money. But for some people actually, no, that's a car Mm. or that's a, that's Mm -hmm. a month Mm -hmm. or two's Mm -hmm. rent. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That you're asking me to spend on something else. Mm. And I think we also need to remember that some people are saying no, not because they don't have the money, but they've allocated the money to something else, which is oftentimes also one, a responsibility or two, a future dream. Mm. And so what you're asking them to do is compromise on something that actually really matters. And what you're asking them to do is make a sacrifice. And it's not that you're not worth the sacrifice as a friend, but what you're asking for is a bit too much. Do you get what I mean? And it means different things. And I think that's another level of empathy. Mm -hmm. Money means different things to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For some people, it's like, money is made to be spent for others money is made to be saved do you get what i mean money yeah. is made for a rainy day money is made to feed my family and my future family and my children and their children and so depending on the season of life your friends may be in um they may not view money the same way that you do so if you are a high earner i would say if you do have the capacity to sponsor your friends to do stuff then do that do you get what i mean like if you can throw the party throw the party and make sure that people aren't coming at a cost or if you are doing a birthday dinner pay for everyone or you know stuff like that and i know everyone sits differently Mm -hmm. with that um and i'm really interested to hear what you think about Mm -hmm. that but i do think that if you've got it like that 
then do that. Like show your friends how much you also care for them. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be buying flight tickets and stuff like that. For that, I would say like give them enough notice and the people who can come will come and yeah. who can't just understand. Yeah. But I do think there's a level of understanding that needs to come and also a level of love, generosity and grace that also needs to be a factor when you're out earning your friends 100%. Um, and also realize that this might not be their situation forever either so it could mm-hmm. be a season thing like mm-hmm. okay you can't go to Tulum this year go to Tulum next year you know and that's actually okay and you don't need to cut off your whole friendship circle of okay. good people because someone didn't come to your birthday dinner or someone couldn't come on that trip like money is a very touchy thing but also for a lot of people like a lot of money goes different lengths for people. Yeah. She go, I mean, yeah, so yeah, yeah. for you, that's a, just a plane ticket for someone. Like I said, that's a whole five months rent. Sure. And it'd be a lot. Yeah. Or lot. even how much it took them to earn that money. Exactly. Right. Like for you, that was one day's work for some people. That's two months paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it gets like, it that. gets like it that. It gets like that. And I think, do you know what? It's just this whole idea of being somebody that is giving. Yeah. Like in all areas of your life, not just giving to your partner. Cause child, trust me, we all been there where we're like, we'll save up to do the most for our partner. We'll do this for our partner and ETC. Ah, your friends yeah. as well. It's okay to also do that for your mm-hmm. friends. Do you know what I mean? I think if you do have it like that, I definitely agree. Do it. Mm-hmm. There is so much joy and like beauty that can come as a result of investing in your friends financially if you can whether it be you know it might not even be you know sponsoring flight tickets or like sponsoring brunches and stuff like that do that if you can but also it might be invest in their dreams Mm. like you know you could be an angel investor to their business you could um support them with some of their own goals so that they can get to a place where they're a bit more financially free friendship does include money Mm. And if you are in a place of abundance, I very much believe that you should be supporting people to get to a place of abundance yeah, too, yeah. rather than spending time chastising them or making them feel inferior because they don't got it like mm. you. And as quickly as you may have gotten it, you mean you know you, you may, may lose, lose it. Do you know what I mean? Heaven forbid that it does happen to you, but these things can often be so seasonal, yeah. right? Like there may be seasons where you've got bare extra income, bare loads of extra money, okay? And yes, you can add to your savings. Yes, you can do investments, but personal relationships are also a form of investment, right? And you never know where you could need that person in a rainy day or later on. Just because they don't reciprocate in finances, they may reciprocate in another way. It may be that they'll become your emotional rock when you're going through a tough time in the next season. Exactly. It may be that they'll support you in a you know another way. And I think it's just important to see that money is one of the ways in which that we can invest in our friends yeah. too. Um, oftentimes we just lay those expectations and say, show up for me in this particular way or like show up with this amount of money. And as you were saying, money goes different ways for different people. And the economy is tight. Oh, it's really tight. No, no, no. It's Guys. really, really, really tight out here. And it's a okay. Think about when we were kids, right? And we had less responsibilities and yeah. all that kind of stuff. We used to do this thing with our like friendship group when we were like sixth form or um, secondary school, where it was like when it was somebody's birthday, we didn't all go and get 10 million gifts mm-hmm. for that person. We all knew our pocket money was short. <laughs> Okay, it was S for short. We didn't have money. Do you know what I'm saying? But also, admittedly, this was back in the day when Freddo's were 10p. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was was, a different economic time. This was a different time. But even then, our money was short. Yeah. So what we did was rather than doing the whole individual thing, we pulled our resources every single birthday to get that card, to get that balloon, to get that shiny present that we knew the person would really enjoy. And it meant that everyone still felt a sense of ownership and the person still felt loved because they knew that everybody had actually mm, contributed, mm. whether it, it was a lot or not in, you know, a not little a bit, not, yeah. not a lot. Right. And just to add context to that, a lot would have been up with five pounds. That's a lot. You're that's a lot of that's, money for people a, on 15 pounds a week. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if somebody gave five pounds, Ratios, their, parent, baby. Baby, their parents was doing a lot. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Usually at times when the economy was tough. <laughs> <laughs> baby we was broke we were students we, we, was, just trying to make it, we was just trying to yeah, make it yeah yeah but also that i think even with that conversation <laughs> the beauty of that is we weren't poor we were just young. We were young and i think that's another thing with like money like if you let social media fool you there you'll you think go. oh we were poor but actually no that was how much most people our age had 
Do you know how funny that was? <laughs> you get me? Like we weren't broke, we were average. We were, and that's what, what people mean? can afford averagely. But I think in a world as well where you're watching vlogs, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> where people are going to Michelin star restaurants yeah, for their yeah. 18th birthday. And guys, can we actually have a conversation about that? Because not even just 18 year olds, and I'm sure we can say the same for romantic relationships. Social media is really blowing out of proportion our expectations for it. our relationships. It's distorting it. Like, Ridiculous. We need, we can't think in relation to reality. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, I saw that this person ate 48 oysters on their stop first it, date. Stop it, stop I should it. be able to do that or like the equivalent. And it's like, are you normal? Ah. Can you afford that for yourself? Ah. And even if you could, most people can't. Yeah, Do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And so when you, and when that translates to friendships, it's kind of like everyone's able to travel for their birthday. No, some people have never left the country as before. Is. And as much as that may not be aspirational, it is very normal and common. And I think a lot of us are distorting what normal is absolutely, and we think that normal a normal gift is a Dior saddlebag it's like it's not it's actually not it's a normal not. gift is a candle <laughs> not even a Joe Malone candle I was even about to say yo guys even me me, me and Courtney were having this conversation because I said oh it would be nice to get some diffusers in our house you know smelling nice what kind of sense do you like and she was like oh you know I, I really want a, a Joe Malone uh, diffuser. I said, oh, <laughs> let me have a look at the prices for this thing. I looked, guys, £75. There's a reason why I myself have been even more. £75 yeah. and without shipping. I know, I, said, ah, I know. That's Joe, the Joe, thing. Joe. But you see, when Melissa's wardrobe is what you're looking at, know, do you know what I mean? You know I mean? have to remind myself I'm not there yet. I said, Joe, Joe. I said, ah, one day. Not one today. One day? One day, One day. Do you get what I mean? Well, not today. That Hallelujah. Are 75 pounds. I said, I will have to crowd for But it apparently, for just put the girls on, Aldi has some really good jeeps. They do, you know. Aldi, and they're like three, four pounds, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So. And also, if you want something a little bit more luxe, M&S also do some M&S really great diffusers. Great. So, you know, M&S there's something great. for everybody at every yeah. Even price Even Primark. Range. Primark they diffusers they are cheeky, cheeky good. They do good. some good yeah. ones as well. They do some really, really good ones. If you're looking for a black home company support, Lange Candles. Oh, fantastic. They're great as they well. They do fantastic. Yeah. And the throw. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Can you tell that we're getting old? Our excitement at diffusers <laughs> the is quite... Throw. Oh, the throw, the scent. The throw. When I entered into the room, the I felt the scent, you know. It was giving me vanilla and that kind of stuff. But even that, right? The fact we're able to have the conversation is like, oh, I'd really like this baby girl. <laughs> it's not like, in the budget. We, it is not within not our in allocated spend. But yeah. when that changes, we can have a conversation about that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I think it's even that, right? Encouraging conversation in and amidst your friends yeah. and talking about the realities of what everybody is going through is yeah, super, super important. Because yeah, yeah. I think sometimes when you don't have access to that information, you can demonize your friends as Easily. well and think, oh, you don't care about me because you're unwilling to spend this money on me. And yeah. it's like, maybe it's not that they don't like you or don't value you. Maybe it's that they just don't have the money or the funds. And it's so heartbreaking when people are made to feel inferior because yes. they don't have the funds to express their love yeah. in the way that you actually desire. hundred percent. Heartbreaking. But on the flip side. <laughs> on she the said you screw this. Do not be stingy. Because there is something special about showing someone that you are willing 100%. to invest in a good 100%. experience, a memory, um, time with them to do something that they love and yep. if you are repeatedly the person who you actually do have it maybe you ain't got it like that but you actually do have it and you could especially if you do it for other people it's terrible but you won't do it for them it does communicate something so with, just remember that within friendship just like even in romantic relationship yep. as much as romantic relationships are not solely built on money mm -hmm. money plays a part it do you does. get what i mean in showing someone that you you care and you work to also make sure that they can enjoy mm -hmm. in life as well. And so, yeah, if you are a friend who is being stingy, stop that nonsense. Stop it. It's affecting your relationships it's and it's going to make people not invite you to places in the mm -hmm. first place. And then you're going to be doing, my friends don't want me around. Why would they want God you around? loves a cheerful giver. giver. So if you can give gifts. Simple. And it doesn't even have to be stingy in terms of the amount of money you spend yeah. it's even the thought in what you're spending yeah. right it can be a very small thing like oh i thought of you so i got you flowers when yeah. was the last time you got your friend flowers yeah. ah, or you know something just nice that something consistent something nice is absolutely fine but apply that level of giving to your friends and i know some people are still dealing with um unrequited platonic love mm -hmm. i think a lot of people are kind of stingy as a result of having given to people that don't necessarily reciprocate yeah, in that yeah. way and i would encourage you to not 
you know, give up hope. In mm-hmm. the same way that with some romantic relationships, you end up with somebody that's stingy mm-hmm. and you got a late. No, because some some people you'll be doing the most for and they don't, you, not one couple they've spent on you, not one, let me buy this person something, something I was thinking I of you. I remember when I was dating a broke man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're a broke man. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> if you've watched Love is Blind. Oh yeah, I haven't finished it. I haven't finished it. It's, <laughs> it's male. <laughs> It's smell. It's smell. It's smell. It's smell. <laughs> ah, Izzy, Izzy. <laughs> What's good, Poppy? <laughs> What's good, Poppy? <laughs> How's that credit that you speak of? Can you imagine you're actually not serious? <laughs> wow. I ain't gonna do a spoiler. Maybe we have to do that whole love is blind. Yeah, um, um, I'll finish it, guys. Child. I'll watch it and then let's and let's then we re- can do a little dissection. Yeah, we week. need to do like an after hours yeah. of that love is blind because <laughs> I miss those episodes, you know, that we used to do, yeah. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is Izzy, the evil that you're doing there, <laughs> you must be stopped. Okay. <laughs> Um, sisters, if you haven't watched it, please, I'm not going to spoil it for you because yeah, I know that the watch. last episode has just come out. So just go and watch. But it's not good to be. It's not good to be stingy. It's not, it's not good to be stingy at all. And it's also, you don't give just to receive. Exactly. As much as friendships are reciprocal, you have to understand that, like, giving as a practice in mm-hmm. general mm-hmm. and as a principle trains your heart in general and just shows good of your character. Right. Um, and I also wanted to emphasize there as well, like ask your friends what celebrating and communing and um, quality time looks like to them. Mm-hmm. What are their love languages? Mm-hmm. What do they want out of this friendship? Because there are some friends who it's like, I really want to make new memories with my friends. Right. You know, I really want us to enjoy life. And so the holiday actually does matter to them. But there are some friends who are like, I just want you to come over and kick it with me. Honestly. You know, I just want to FaceTime even. I would just appreciate a call because we, you, we, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about like low maintenance or high maintenance friendships. And I think it's just about like, neither is necessarily good or bad. I mm-hmm. think it's just about understanding what your friend interprets as care and affection in that season of their life. Absolutely. And, you know, when you are freshly making money and maybe you come from a background where it's like, you didn't have anything, the idea of traveling the world or doing something nice or even being able to go out to eat with people you love is so exciting and thrilling um and so you want to do that all the time because that's what you associate with freedom and care and stuff like that but for some people that stuff doesn't even matter Mm. so i would say like treat your friend as an individual and ask them what they love at the time but also as a as the friend um make sure that you know what is informing your choices and your what is motivating you mm. and what's informing your preference because social media can be very insidious and before you realize it you have those unrealistic expectations for your friends and you're causing you're just applying more pressure than you need to 100 percent. and remember your community is in person yes first. as much as you look at other people's friendships and what you know the girls are doing in their travel vlogs what are you actually doing at home real question focus on your home focus your home there. is actually focus. out of order it's necessary for you to focus. And I think even allocating or think in your mind in um, the resources that you carry, actually allocating something towards friendship. Mm. Because I think as much as we have allocated funds to like other things, I think many of us see our friendships as like back burner things. Mm. If we have extra, if I can, um, then I'll spend money in this particular area. And it's like, no, if you can allocate something towards friendships yeah. right actually have maybe a pot where it's like i'm gonna invest in this friend this month or i'm gonna take mm-hmm. this friend out for coffee or whatever but actually thinking about the resources that you have and allocating something towards your friendships and investing in your friendships so is so so important because it means that you're not left um scrounging around for scraps of money when you are trying to celebrate your friends you know when your birthday your friend's birthdays is coming up yeah you know when there are certain things that are coming and for those of you who don't because i sometimes struggle with dates (laughs) just put it in your calendar put it in your calendar my friends (laughs) dead ass put Put your if you haven't already don't be relying on your memory ah i'm not even for this long adulting gets hard put an alarm on so ping 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 10 o'clock in the morning it's somebody's birthday birthday. there you go So even if you did forget you, ah, good morning, happy birthday. Literally, literally. These things are important, right? And as much as we can say, oh, you know, everybody's going through it and, you know, mental health, ETC, it's actually even more important to then show up and actually make the effort to ensure that you have systems in place to demonstrate your love for your friends. So if you can 
allocate. And then for those of you that love like gifts, mm. you love like love being, a cheeky Yeah, gift. you know what I mean? Give us a range, okay? Yeah. If That's it is good. your birthday coming up, you don't always have to have super expensive things. Yes. You can put them at the top in the hope that somebody is going to buy them because yeah. you never know. That could be yeah. somebody's lottery. Yeah. And if you know your friends are like, on average, everyone's got it. Oh, go all out, baby. <laughs> baby, put what you need <laughs> go to. All out. You better put that, uh, uh, what do you call it? Mason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Put the, the What's perform, the name? Perform. What's the name? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Jeez. <laughs> you go ahead and you put that. <laughs> I don't know it either. Because I'm going to tell you what you're that, <laughs> that Francis Maison Kirk Dashka something. something. <laughs> it's right, girl. You ain't got to say it. You have Baccarat. There so. you go. There you go. That Baccarat Rouge. Yeah, Baccarat Rouge. Um, <laughs> when you stopped at Maison <laughs> Oh, it was not the same thing. There you go. That's how you know. You can take the girl out the hood. <laughs> Can't take the hood out the, the girl. girl. <laughs> North London, baby. It's all the gang. Um, <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> I actually despise. Oh, my chest. You hurt. go ahead and put that expensive stuff. Yeah. There's You go ahead and put that at the top of your list, and maybe somebody will buy someone it. Someone will buy you. it for you. No, you would be yeah, surprised. Someone will buy it for Especially you. Especially if you have a wide array of different yeah. friends. Like, you might have a friend that has an inheritance. <laughs> what you need. Put what you need at the top. But then, equally, there's other things that you need yeah. that cost less money. Yeah. Like, for me, one of my favorite things to put is get me a little or Audi gift, gift card. card. I love that. Yeah. Or like get me a Costa something. Just yeah. get me something that I need. Yeah. But you know, sometimes there's like essential items that you don't want to spend money on. Yeah, a hundred percent. If you give me the funds for that. Let oh. me tell you something. If for my next birthday, you get me the big pack of toilet roll from Costco, <laughs> do you think I won't be eternally grateful? <laughs> because the labor involved is those things that will actually catch you off. Guard. Oh. A good Nando's voucher. It. Easy. God be the glory. Easy. A good Nando's. I would know if there was one day I was having a rough day. One of my friends said, Oh, let me get you a Nando's. I, c- I could have cried. <laughs> like, I was so happy. I could have cried. I said, I needed that. Literally. Right there. Literally. So just even as you're creating your gift lists, it can be the highest of highs. Literally. And also just the basic stuff, just so that people know that they can contribute to your life yeah. in some way. I'm it's actually okay. That's actually one of my love languages. It so really f- is. Something small for the boys. Just, just something, something, something small for the boys. Mm-hmm. Literally, something just small. if if you ever hear Courtney's upset, a cheeky 15 pounds will make me happy instantly. Just, oh, I'm going to send you a little sign. It's like, just something nice Just go you. get yourself a lunch. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> And then you can go and get yourself an expensive lunch that you don't have to justify. At the Do you end get of what I month. mean? No, seriously, just a nice little pasta, Nando, yeah, like, something. Even a cheeky Nando, something. Someone ah. buy you coffee. Yeah, but also those things add up. They do. So don't. Also, this is another thing. Don't commit to what you can't follow through 100%. with. Hundred percent. If you know. I can't do this every month, but I'll give it to you one time or I'll do this for you one time. Then let's make it an occasion, you know, but That's okay. don't overcommit. Don't push yourself. 100%. Don't be going into debt no, because no, of friendship. No, 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 That's no, no, for damn no, no. sure. Oh, that's... What could you imagine? Don't do that. That's no, because I know a lot of people who are going on the girls trip that's on outrageous. the credit card. No, 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 girl, don't do that. Mm-mm-mm. Don't do that. Because they ain't going to pay you back. Mm-mm, unless it's on an Amex. It's you, ah, and even then, Shai, still you just got to It's <laughs> you it that back. has to pay it back. So sis, please, there you go. avoid these situations. Be honest. And if yeah. you can crowdfund yeah. like guys like yeah, yeah. even if for example somebody puts on their list you know i want this really pricey thing yeah collaborate a couple of you come together to collaborate get everybody comes together and puts their money especially because now we're older mm-hmm. like 
I think about our friendship group, right? And how we were there putting our one pound, two pound together and getting something nice because mm-hmm. there's like a good like seven of us, yeah, eight of yeah. us. Somebody is lush. <laughs> you're getting something nice. Maybe you're not getting the uh, foundation from Super Drunk. You're yeah. getting the foundation from Dior. There because you when go. you add it together, yeah, we got the pounds, money now. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, now that we're all a little bit older, obviously people are in different places, but that kind of thing adds up. Mm-hmm. So if you did want the pricey perfume or the pricey whatever, it's like everyone has come together. Yeah. We have enough money to do that. So yeah. if you do have a girls group or if you have friends in common, collaborate. All together. Collaborate. Yeah. Even when it comes to, I really do wish we could bring back the communal spirit Literally. of our parents. Because even for in a party, if you take all of the expenses of a party, this is what Mandy was saying. By a couple of people, you could throw, you could throw, you could throw a big hall party. The amount of times we mentioned hall parties on this podcast, we, we need, need to, to throw CMS, one yeah, for CMS real. CMS but like, yeah, like everyone just do your bit. Do your bit, sisters. And that's what we're going to end on today. Man, what a great act. Do your bit. But sisters, we are so interested to hear what you have to say about this situation. Have you ever been in an outrageous friendship situation <laughs> where you were demanded to cough up money? Uh, oh, you know what we didn't even talk about? What? The cost of weddings. Like the cost we're not of finished. being Let's like a bridesmaid no, 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 or something. No, 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 no. We're not finished. Let's go back. Who is meant to absorb that cost? I ain't got nothing for you. <laughs> to be very honest, I don't even have anything to add I to this conversation. I've never been a bridesmaid. I've been a bridesmaid once. So who? But my cousin's wife. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't pay for nothing. Though. Were I you were ch- like up. young? No, not that young. I was like maybe 20, 21. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I paid for my transport. Oh, yeah. I paid for my shoes. And they paid, they for, paid for my dress. Else. They paid for everything else. Yeah, I would want to do that for when I find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100. Oh, God. I think it's going. It's always going to be a case by case basis. Yeah, I yeah, think it's yeah. becoming increasingly the norm, though, for like bridesmaids to have to financially to invest, invest, especially with the cost of weddings themselves skyrocketing. Crazy. When I was looking at ah, the price of insanity. Good God! So just to to see somebody for the rest of your mm, life, mm, just mm. to wake up next to this person, you're telling me that I got to put down a cool forty, fifty k? Impossible. Beat me. Because that's how you're going to get the money out of yeah, me. Nah. Beat me, mate. Nah. Outrageous. Outrageous. So well, it, definitely, it definitely makes sense that there will be some kind of financial investment as mm-hmm. a bridesmaid, probably yeah. when you're thinking about things like hemp Or financial sacrifice. Like yeah, financial yeah. sacrifices. But I think what's becoming increasingly difficult is as the cost of weddings are inflating, yeah. the investment from the community is starting to get a little yes. bit you know yeah, yeah, especially yeah. because we had this conversation amidst our friends in terms of like you might have to charge people to come to your wedding guys if you want. <laughs> guys i've been saying this if thing she has been, I i've been lie. saying this thing for so long and everyone thought i was crazy that cost of living game yep. a profit well do you know what i mean nah. a woman before her time yep. what are your thoughts on charging for not tickets per se. Entrance fee. But hear me. Entrance fee. You send people your invitations and you say, send me a hundred pounds. I don't know how you're going to put it, but like send me 50 pounds. But this is the thing. No gifts. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Just send me the money. I think it's very normal for people to say, I don't want a gift. Just give us money because that's what yes. we actually need. But to be fair, I think that might even be a whole nother podcast episode. Yeah. Just talking about like, weddings i have nothing the financial. to share i have nothing i have nothing i we'll can bring ask somebody questions on. No, yeah no, no, we'll you. bring people on don't worry we'll, we'll widen up that conversation <laughs> our sisters that have got married because we've even like, just the industry around weddings, weddings? i want to ah, tell you right you want to now, say capitalism in full effect i want to tell y'all right now look at me about our balls y'all are trifling oh, for a, some of the, the reason things, why this whole Las Vegas wedding situation is starting to look more yeah. and more desirable as Eloping. I get older. Eloping is just looking because 40, 50 grand to get married. A house deposit. And, oh, and there's so much. Obviously, if you have it like that and you want to do that, do your thing. Easy. Do your thing. That I ain't, I ain't got nothing against you. But I personally think it's outrageous. But this is what we call financial relativism. Yeah. She get what I mean? <laughs> the, Everything is so relative. 50k for someone, small chops. But even that is the actual value that you're getting for that 50k is what I find outrageous. But everyone perceives value differently. That's true. 
Anyways, if you find it valuable, shall. if you find it valuable, then it is what it is. Because for some people, a wedding is is social acceptance. Mm-hmm. It's your family's approval, and also that you may actually have people that are sewing into that wedding. Like exactly, that, so. and that's the thing. It's like for some people, fifty k they could raise it like that. That's true. Do you get what that's I mean? That's true. For others, fifty k is a lifetime's yep. worth of work. And people will come to your wedding. They will chop like and then you're going home. Head. Is it even a home you're yeah. going to? <laughs> Is it even a, a furnished house? A shed, if you will. But it's let's hard. talk about priorities another yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's a whole other TMS conversation. And we'll actually, we might bring some sisters and brothers to For talk real. about that one because the cost of relationships. Mm, the cost you, of romance. Ah, the cost of romance, but also the cost of marriage <laughs> is a lot. No, it's a lot, no. For real. Being married real. is, is but expensive. It's, I think it's more the cost of a wedding. Yeah. The cost of marriage, yeah, but even that's that, more spiritual. Well, to spiritual. be fair, um, I was watching uh, a sermon and one guy was talking about, oh, the dink life is great, so it's double income, no kids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you have kids, anyways, these are all uh, cool. these are all conversations yeah, for the cost another. of series. Ah, the yeah. cost of. Anyway, you heard it here first, guys. We hope you enjoyed that conversation. <laughs> uh, let us know what you think on the expenses of being a friend. Yeah. How much do you spend on your friends? Should we invest more in friendship? Mm. What outrageous stories do you have to tell us about some of the expenses that you've had to dole out on your friends? Is there anything that you would like covered that we didn't cover? I would mm. love to know. Mm. Drop it like it's hot, respectfully, though, in the comments below on YouTube. And also on Spotify, you can now send in notes that we can publish on Spotify, which is exciting. So once you have listened and of course rated five stars, don't drop comments if you haven't rated it five stars just yet. Please go and do that nonsense right now ASAP. Thank you. Drop it like it's hot. And of course, feel free to follow us on all of our social media platforms. We are growing big, healthy community. Let's go. At To My Sisterhood, literally everywhere. Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. Just everywhere. You'll find us, baby. We're outside. We are. And of course, come and follow my lovely, lovely, lovely co-founder and co-host over here on the left of me at CD Watang. And of course, come and follow me over at Renee Kapuku. We love to see it. Sign up to our mailing list on our website to my sister <laughs> you said that with such because <laughs> i was about to say at to my sister and i said the same thing last week i am yelling <laughs> sign up to our mailing list um on our website to my and make sure that we see you at the live show on the 27th of october uh sisters we love you have an amazing week and as always keep glowing and growing <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say <laughs>